Take my hand and hold it tight. Look at the paintings, I'll be your guide. Don't stop looking in my eyes. Hi, love. Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, welcome, nice to have you. Today I am going to show you how to make that two-piece swimwear that you just saw in my intro. The fabric I'll be using is from my company's fabric, but I'll be sure to list in my description box below places you can find similar fabric. Without further ado, let's get into the tools and materials you'll need to complete this project. For my pattern, I'll be using this swimsuit I sell on my company, tbsluxclo.com. It's pretty much going to be in the same format, but at the center, I'll be including these rings just to give it a classy open, if that makes sense. So this is what this tool is going to be used for. If you do not own a two-piece bikini like this, don't worry, girl. I got you. You can use a panty that's in your drawer. I wouldn't use a thong for obvious reasons. It has to be a panty that looks similar to this one. For the top, if you have maybe a bantu top, meaning like a crop top that like pretty much a smaller version of this top that I'm wearing in your closet, you can use that. If you do not own a bantu top, you can try a, there's really not a formula for the top. It's super easy. You can just cut out a long rectangle and I'm almost sure you're gonna get the same results because for the top, it's not specific. Also, because I'm using a mesh material, I want this to be double lined, but not with the same exact fabric. And so that's where my lining is gonna come to play. If you're not using mesh fabric and you're using a rayon, you can try the double line method. So guys, I changed my mind about me doing my top piece this short. I actually want it to have a long tie. That way it can be versatile. I can tie it up here, tie it at the waist. 
just do different styles with it. So I won't be using this as my pattern. I am just going to measure one long rectangular piece. So my bust, top to bottom, is about seven inches. I'm gonna add two inches to that length. So the width of my fabric will be nine inches. As far as the width, I think I'm gonna cut it the exact length of my cutting mat. I do want it to be long because again, I wanna do versatile styles with it. I don't just want one look. And so yes, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be a daredevil and see if I can cut all four fabrics at one time. How? You're asking how. So I'm gonna fold each of my fabrics in half. You wanna make sure the fabric is as flat as possible. Take my lining fabric and place it on top and do the same thing, fold it in half. You should end up with eight pattern pieces, which are the bikini bottom, so two pieces for my outer layer, and then two pieces for my inner layer, which is gonna be my fabric lining, and then two pieces for the top outer layer, and then two pieces for the inner layer. If you're doing one kind of pattern, you'll have four of the same pieces, but all in all, there's two different pattern pieces, which is the rectangle, and the bikini bottoms. You're gonna wanna take the outer layers, make sure it's wrong side facing, meaning if you have pattern and on one side it's slightly faded, on another side it's more vibrant, so the side that's slightly faded is gonna be considered wrong side fabric. So you want the wrong side fabric facing you here. You're going to take your sewing pins and join them at the center. We're just prepping the fabrics right now. We're connecting the wrong side facing. You're gonna grab your lining and repeat this step. Now that both of my pattern pieces are joint, we are going to begin sewing. When I go to the machine, I am just going to be sewing down the center here where the bottom center of the bikini connects. I'm going to be doing this for both the back and the front, which are the same exact pattern pieces. Now we are going to take the wrong sides facing and place them on the outside. So now the right side should be facing you and you're pretty much going to sandwich the right sides facing together. That way the wrong sides facing are out. This is the wrong side facing where I've sewn and your right side facing is going to be where the fabric is more vibrant 
or if you have the same exact fabric, it's pretty much going to be the opposite side of where you originally sewed. You're gonna have the right side facing inside, and so the outside should be the wrong side facing. So you're basically sandwiching the right side facing together, leaving the wrong sides exposed. And again, if you are sewing with fabric that doesn't have pattern and everything is the same, you're simply going to be showing the sides that you sewn, if that makes sense. Once you've sandwiched them, you're just going to place pins all around. And that way you can keep precision while you sew. So I'm just going to place a few pins just all the way around. I am now going to sew around the bikini, which is here, all the way around, all the way around, leaving the waist part open on both sides. So on this side, I'm gonna leave this open, and then on the other side, the same thing. You spend all your nights in the house, you know I understand. You know what it's like to lose a life, and I understand. You'll be keeping to yourself until I found you. Girl, come over, I'm trying to get it on. I am now going to take some elastic and apply it to the edges of the bikini while it is still wrong side facing. I don't want it to be too tight around my thighs and so I'm just going to slightly pull when I am sewing instead of drastically pulling. You don't have to use a lot of pens. Just pen enough where it's able to just stay in place while sewing. The settings you are going to use to sew on your elastic is a zigzag stitch. This is very, very important. I'll be choosing this zigzag stitch, which is number three. I'm going to keep the tightness and XYZ on its default. After you finish changing your settings to a zigzag stitch, you're going to do a couple of back stitches just to secure the elastic. So you're only going to sew on the edges. So when you're sewing here, don't sew like this. Make sure your width is not that big. Just sew on the edges, if that makes sense. You all will see. Make sure to pull your elastic like so while you're sewing. I'm not going to do it extreme like this because I don't want that much tightness to my stretch um, so I'm just gently pulling you should have ended up with a piece that looks like so the only seams you should have sewn is literally this area not where the waist meets and not on the waist part so this side should be open and the waist part should be open. The only thing that should be sewn again is the inner thigh layer. Not this part here and not the waist part up top. Now you're going to take your hand and pull the other side outwards like so. So we're pulling it outwards. The seam should not be showing. Everything should be invisible. Now we are going to go ahead and join the side seams together. You're going to now flip the bikini wrong side facing like so and pin the edges. Now that I've finished pinning the sides to hold where the waist meets in place, I am now going to put this under my serger machine. Again, if you do not own a serger machine, that is completely fine. Life goes on. Just use a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine and just sew the edges. Maybe go over it two or three times just to give it that nice clean look and also have it secured at the same time. Serging your sides, you are going to pull it 
right side facing. You should end up with a bottom piece that looks like this so far. So I'm now going to switch back to my regular sewing machine and add the elastic to the waistband and then we'll get started with the top part. However thick your elastic is, that's what you'll use as a measurement to figure out how far down you should pull your elastic. So if your elastic is thicker, you're gonna wanna come down more because you'll need more fabric to cover the elastic. So once you pull it somewhat down, you're gonna fold it over the goal here is to cover the elastic. So once you fold it over, you're going to take a sewing pin and pin it into place. You're going to have to do a lot of multitasking for this part, especially if you have a similar fabric. You're going to be pulling the fabric just so it can have that stretch effect. And at the same time, you want to make sure you are folding the fabric at the same time so it's a lot of multitask going on here but it's it's achievable we're getting through this together so i'm folding over the fabric i'm going to remove my sewing pen now that it's in position you absolutely always want to start sewing by back stitching first and then we can go forward just remember to fold the elastic over as you're sewing and pull the elastic at the same time. Now for the top part, we're going to take similar steps that we did for the bikini bottom. You're going to start by making sure the right side is facing you. Be sure when you're sewing, you are only sewing the longer part and leaving these two sides exposed. Because when we pull right side facing, we need to be able to pull the fabric through. Again, if you do not own a search machine, it is completely A-OK. -okay. Do not beat yourself up. You can just use a straight stitch um, for this or a zigzag stitch, and it's going to work just the same, okay? Because we keep, we keep going. We don't let anything stop us around here. Anything. Okay, so your ends should have came out looking like this if you're using a serger machine, okay? So now we're going to get to sewing the other side. This is how it should look once you flip it right side facing. You should have a clean seam. You're going to put your fabric inside of your ring like so. You're going to fold your fabric over the ring and you're going to kind of do a rush look. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> but you're going to do like a rush, a rush or a rush ruffled up look. So again, you want to make sure it's ruffled around the ring and then you're going to take it under your machine. I switched my settings back over to a straight stitch and now I'll begin sewing. Gonna definitely want to sew in around. So your result should look something like this. This is the front and this is the back. I am now going to cut off the access. You want to cut as close to the edge as possible for the cleanest finish. Now let's do the other side. Always start with the back stitch and we are going to begin sewing. Back stitch and then forward. Perfect. 
So the inside should look something like this. Make sure to cut the threads off. And then the front should look something like this. I absolutely love the length. The only thing that I do not like is how thick the ends are. So I'm going to take this and put it back under my serger machine and make the ends more narrow. That way when I'm doing different styles, it doesn't look so bulky. Here's the difference. If you look at the ending here, it's way more narrower than how it looked before. One is narrower and one is way more thicker. Now I am going to close the edges. Again, if you do not own a serger machine, it is fine. It is a-okay. You can simply close it off with a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch. Your preference. The zigzag stitch just helps it um, maintain its stretch um, while the straight stitch is more firm. Ignition, run your mouth, but I never listen. You hold me back, we'll never last. Keep talking all your shit. Wondering how all this started. You left me broken hearted. You flip my words, yeah, this love hurts. Keep talking all your shit. Oh, keep talking all your shit, baby. Your words that driving me crazy. Keep talking all your shit, baby. Ignition, run your mouth, but I never listen. You hold me back, we'll never last. Keep talking all your shit. Wondering how all this started. You left me broken hearted. You flip my words, yeah, this love hurts. Keep talking all your shit. Oh, keep talking all your shit, baby. Your words that driving me crazy. Keep talking all your shit, baby. You know.